the four golden rules of analysis. One, always ask, what is my opponent threatening? Two, what does my intended move or moves do to meet this threat? Three, what was I threatening and what did my opponent's last move do to meet this threat? And finally, four, are there any single, double, or triple threats I can make now? Continuing along the lines of the notion of what is the threat in a position, we present the following example taken from the game Fisher versus Camera from the World Team Olympics in Siegen, Germany in 1970. This is a very famous position. Had black hats a sufficient sense of danger and been aware of the threat, he would not have allowed one rook takes d7 in this position. Exclamation mark. And here we consider two alternatives for black. The first is the text which was played and the second is the possibility of rook takes c3. White can play rook takes e7 check, desperadoing his rook, king takes e7, bishop takes c3 discovered check, and perhaps this is the strongest amongst a number of alternatives for white. Returning to the position after 19 rook takes d7 by white, black continued with king takes d7 and Fisher played knight to b5 and the threat is rook to d1 check. So black camera played queen to c6. And now rook to d1 check was played anyway. And bl black is forced to play king to e8. And Fisher followed with knight to c7 check, which is threatening to completely destroy black's king after king f8, rook to d8 check. So black played instead. Queen takes c7, bishop takes c7, rook takes c7, queen to b5 check. In this position, black resigned because if he moves his king to f8, then white simply mates starting with rook to d8 check. And if black moves any piece to d7, white adds on to the pin of that piece with knight to c5. And of course, if here rook takes c5, queen takes d7 check leads to mate. Another example of the sense of danger and its importance in correctly assessing a chess position and analyzing what is the threat is the following position taken from the game Jansa Bilic. In a race to attack on opposite wings, it is especially important that you recognize your opponent's threats. White needs to guard the c2 pawn. How should he do this? Certainly not rook c1, since the rook is needed for attack. White's knight on b3 is currently not doing much, and black also threatens to push this knight around and expose the white king with the pawn move a5 followed by a4. So Janser finds 
perhaps the surprising move, knight to a1, exclamation mark. This is a star move because it defends with the piece least likely to be necessary for white's attack while anticipating black's attack. Black played e6 in this position, and Grandmaster Yansa recommends here instead the alternative bishop to e5. When he suggests that white can continue with h takes g6, f takes g6, f4, bishop to c3, of course this bishop cannot be touched with b takes c3 because of b takes c3 check and wins the white queen. So white would naturally continue with queen to h2, h5 by black, and now b takes c3 would be possible, and white defends as well as attacks. Now we return to the game continuation, which was e6, and Yansa played h takes g6, h takes g6, queen to h2, e takes d5, queen h7 check, king f8, bishop h6, removing the key defender of the king side, bishop takes h6, queen takes h6 check, king e8, queen h8 check, king e7, queen h4 check, f6, rook h e1 check, king d8, queen takes f6 check, with a decisive advantage for white. The diagram position is from an endgame of mine which occurred in the International Open Tournament known as the Bank of Dubai Open in London, England in 1977. My opponent is Peter Sowry and you may note that although white is a pawn up and has a nice position, black is threatening to trade off a pair of rooks with rook takes h5 and effectively use his king as a blockader on g6. White must strike while the opportunity is there. I was pleased to find 36 g6 check exclamation mark yes wasn't that my threat in the first place again the moral here is never miss a check and now we consider two alternatives for black the move he played which was king takes g6 and the alternative had he rejected this Greek gift with king to f6, then we could play rook takes h8, bishop takes h8, rook takes h8, exclamation mark, followed by bishop e5 check and wins. So we return to the game continuation where black played king takes g6 and white finds 37 rook to g5 check 
and suddenly black is lost because if he plays king to f7 or king to f6, white will respond with rook takes g7 in either case, winning a piece or mating, depending on black's choice. After bishop e5 check. 